What's good, guys? So, cheers. Good morning. <laughs> so, um, I've just about got my hours back on track. So, um, so right now it's like almost, I don't know, close to five in the morning. So, woke up, it's like 4.30. So, I guess it's coffee time. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get back to normal hours again. I mean, you know, I, I guess mainly because of all the different work that I'm doing to the house, uh, I want to have more hours of daylight, I guess. So uh, I've got quite a bit going on. Uh, lately, I'm sanding. I'm finding that, okay, all, all the metal railings, all the handrails outside. So out front, the very real long one I have out front, uh, as well as all four of the balconies out front. Then I have the two large handrails um, out of both back doors. So I've, uh, uh, just on the one outside of my back door, I'm trying to sand them back smooth uh, because ladders have like really gouged them really bad. Um, but I'm also finding that um, when I feel on them, they're not smooth. And these are all brand new railings. So they spray painted them, but the paint was not even and it wasn't painted well at all. So it's not smooth. It's real rough everything so I'm going back through sanding all of that down and uh, anyway some of the uh, messed up spots going back over I'm doing this the rust-oleum uh, primer so I'm gonna do two coats of this rust-oleum primer and this is the uh, the heavy rust and they don't make a, a, a light rust you know they make a bare metal and then they make this one but if you want to think of it in such a way, this is not bare metal that I'm primering over. And this primer has more like, I want to say more like a self-leveling to where if it has gouges and whatnot, they'll be smoothed over and give a better finish to put a top coat of paint on top of, right? So that's why I'm going with that. Now I bought another gallon of that. That's just like a quart size. Um, that, that I purchased um, but I did buy another gallon of that I'm about to begin sanded all day yesterday uh, today I'm about to sand next doors in the back um, possibly the two balconies on my side today and hopefully get one coat of this primer on at least one of those handrails uh, you know, I, I'm going for two coats of primer and then I'm going to do two coats of paint with Rust-Oleum Gloss Black. So, because it's ironwork, it's, uh, it's metal. And with this kind of paint, this finish will last many, many years. Um, I'm just going over it with a weenie roller and then at this I was in Dollar General the other day and they have paintbrushes a three-pack and this one this was like three dollars and some change like 350 and okay you get one brush with a bit of an angle so not bad uh, feels good and I mean, this is oil-based, so I have to throw these brushes away. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and try to clean brushes um, with mineral spirits. I mean, it would cost me $20 to clean these brushes, so forget it. I'm just going to throw them away. But this is the second brush came with. And this one is a straight edge, so it's, it's not on an angle. 
same thing they feel great in my hand and then this one is a large i don't know is that a two and a half or three inch brush does it say i can't tell i can't tell if it says it on there it's either a two and a half or a three inch brush so and then this one and then I can't tell which side this one is on I, I feel something on both sides so I couldn't tell so anyway just a quick little FYI because man those foam brushes those foam brushes fall apart with this I've been I, I, I used to run an automotive shop for years and I used all this uh, rust-oleum paint and man those foam brushes they work great for a little while and then they just they fall completely apart so I mean the slightest use and they come apart and then then begin dripping paint everywhere and I've got canvas drop cloths all of that so I'm and then all the painters tape to dress up all the feet of the uh, uh, of all of the iron work so yeah I'm about to begin painting all of that and while one thing is being being dried I'll be sanding another and then in between all of that I'll also be going around I replaced all 10 entry doors to the house um, so I have 10 entry doors for you know like the balconies and all, all of that kind of stuff so um, all 10 entry doors have to be painted so I'm gonna have to go back in and caulk all of that like the little staple holes little finishing nail holes that kind of stuff caulk all of that get all of that ready for paint um, because I bought that kind of paint too. It's just before the rainy season comes, I want to get all this kind of stuff done. Um, now, as far as the Rhino Shield painting the house, yeah, that will come. But I've got other stuff to do before then. The house still looks like, I don't know, to me, it, it needs a lot of work yet. So, this is just something I can go ahead and do. And the metal railings needed to be ad addressed like, like immediately. Because uh, it's already got a bit of surface rust on it. But by sanding, I'm taking that little touch of rust off. I'm also smoothing out the gouges. And all of this overspray, or not overspray, but the paint is really... I don't know. It, it, it feels real rough to the touch. I mean, real rough. So it's not smooth at all. So all of this is about to be addressed now because I went and I found what this exact work or workmanship will be like in two years. Because the property I was going to buy across the street was done by the same contractors um, during their home elevation. But they didn't spend any extra money. To do any other things however the railings and all were done exactly the same except i cho chose a little more ornate design but the piping and all was hand fabricated so all that was done well but the two coats of primer and then two coats of paint but it was uh, one coat of primer um and, and and then a quick another shot of primer just to make sure it was covered and in the same day it was painted with two coats of paint that's not the way to do it <laughs> you have to let the primer harden on that kind of metal so yeah right now you can just walk up to it and scratch it with your fingernail so and then it's already starting to get dull and then it feels bad so no i'm gonna go ahead and address this now and i'm gonna do it with the correct paint um and the correct primer um like i said though this is not bare metal so i'm not using the bare metal primer i'm using this because it will cover inaccuracies um where this this primer is meant to cover rust um even though it's not 
heavily rusted, it's still going to cover any gouges and that sort of stuff. So, yep. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, quite a bit to go down over the next um, couple days. So, uh, a few other things on top of that happen and whatnot. So, now I'm dealing with the hot tub. I uh, got a service call in. So, the hot tub was delivered like October, November. Here we are, February, what, 7th, 9th, something like that. And now the breaker is tripping, right? And I'm not getting any er error codes on the hot tub, uh, but it just trips the breaker all the time. So the electrician said it's not the breaker, it's not his work to contact the hot tub company. Then come to find out... Um, so they're, they're, they're sending a service person out because they're like, it, it's still under warranty. I said it, it ought to be. It, it, it's the cost of, I, I paid for a damn Buick. You know, damn hot tub costs as much as a Buick. <laughs> so it, it, it sure better be under the three year, 36,000 mile warranty, you know? So anyway, about to have that looked at because uh, now it's above 50 degrees during the heat of the day so you know it it a hot tub is doable at 50 degrees um in the 30s forget it i ain't getting in a hot tub at 30 degrees unless it's inside the house which it's not so <laughs> so yeah that's coming about and um then the the lid, the cover for the hot tub is about to be installed, finally. Right now, the cover is just resting on the top. I just fold it over one time and then jump in. But you know, now it will be able to fold completely off and over to the side. So, yay. As well as uh, I questioned about the... Uh, I never did get the steps to get into the hot tub e either. Um... And come to find out, these steps I paid over $600 for. Yeah. For steps. Okay, $600, I can build a deck. Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and they're still back-ordered on, on, on these steps for the hot tub. So, they're just going to now issue me a refund, which is cool. Um... Uh, I've just been using like a, a schoolroom chair uh, to, you know, like a lunchroom chair. It just uh, a steel chair that you fold up, collapsible, you know, that I can just put right up next to it and step on it and then climb into the hot tub. That's how I've been getting in and out of the hot tub. So it's like, you know, it's a little sketchy, but, you know whatever <laughs> um, I guess things happen for a reason right so that's why I'm here now um, so yeah I got all of that lined up in motion um, same issue with contractors um, don't want to return phone calls and you know they don't want to work they don't want to do anything and I've got a ton of work yet to go. So I think now I'm just going to go over to Home Advisor and start uh, typing in exactly what I'm, what I need and what I'm looking for uh, to be more specific and start getting things knocked out, right? Because I paid uh, or I took profit out of crypto and all to get all of this stuff done. However, and now moving forward, I'm only going to get the stuff done that I cannot do myself. Um, the stuff I can do myself, I'm going to save a ton of money. I mean, you know, I, and I have 
other people who I can hire like by the day to help me. So that way it's not only me doing work, you know? Um, you know, just helping out. I know what to do and how to do it. That's not the issue. The issue is it's it gets overwhelming because I'm only one man, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Other stuff. I'm still going through stuff in the house. And every day, uh, I, my goal is to fill up one garbage can full of stuff in a day. Because I've got stuff that is either bad or, you know, as far as like, I don't know, the glue that you uh, put on the back of CVT tile, you know, the old schoolroom tile, that kind of stuff that, you know, it, stuff that some of that is broken and then the glue and stuff is all dried up and nasty. I can't even use it anymore. So that kind of stuff is being pitched and other, other stuff like little small little area rugs not like not like a 9 by 11 or anything like that just small little runner you know something like that look all of that shit i'm throwing all that shit out i ain't even playing with it no more <laughs> so um i mean look if i don't need it can't use it what am I what am I doing holding on to this stuff for? So now I'm going through and at least every day I'm wanting to throw throw out or pitch one full garbage can of stuff. Um because it, it's just it's not I'm I'm sick of spending thirty minutes looking for a screwdriver or a full day for a paintbrush, right? Because I can, I can swear to you that I bought Lowe's out of foam brushes as well as Dollar General. Because they had uh, foam brushes really cheap too at Dollar General. So anyway, I, I, I was like, well, they're out of those. So how much are these? And come to find out, these are decent brushes. And for like $3.50. I mean, I'm paying, what, 88, 90 cents for foam brushes? That That's not going to last. These will at least last. I mean, yeah, I'm, I may have a bristle left over in the paint that I may have to take care of after, but, you know, that's only with a magnifier that I'll be able to pick up on that. Um, or have somebody else go over it and take a, a good look. But, like with this primer, it, it's going to be a brown color, a light brown and so and what's out there now is a black but it looks like it was painted in flat black not in gloss black so anyway with the brown it's a color contrast i'll be able to see that so i'll have that going for me and then when i'm ready to go and put the two coats of paint of gloss black on i'll be able to see that as well yay <laughs> So it won't be like like me painting the um, the baseboards and the door trim and the door frame and all in, in the kitchen, right? So the two door frames and all the baseboards and all and the door casings and all. I did all of that in the kitchen, and I had no idea that the paint that I bought at Lowe's, they moved where the paint was, and I went back to where I, I had purchased the the gloss white, and this is a gloss clear. I had no idea because I was using the light that I was using. It The way that I paint is I see the shine of the paint. I can't tell by the change of the color on like baseboards and stuff on inside. The outside work I'm about to begin doing, I will be able to see that better than inside. Um, but yeah, I, I've come to find out I painted all this stuff. I mean, I did a damn good job too. Uh, damn good coverage, nice, thick, great brush strokes, you know, it looked great as I was applying it as far as the shine that was coming back to me from what I could see, and sure enough, it, it, it comes back and it's a clear coat, clear coat, 
It still looks like all the same damaged, mixed matched, painted wood. I'm like, what is this? Who knew, right? Who knew? So, it, maybe the uh, maybe the person up there at Lowe's wanted to have some fun with me and just move the paint, you know, out of the way. So I thought I I, I grabbed the same. It was the same color, uh, paint can, everything, you know. So now I have a a, a can of clear coat. Not epoxy. What is that? Enamel. It's a clear gloss enamel. Why even make such a thing? I mean that that's like. I, I, anyway, I got the I got that instead of the gloss white enamel, uh, is, which is what I wanted for the baseboards and all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway um i i have not gone back and redone it I, I just it just pissed me off and then i had to take a step back and walk away from that for a little bit uh, besides i've had other things go on so but yep about to get more so on all of this oh and the mineral spirits I got a big gallon of mineral spirits to go ahead and wipe everything down really well before paint so I'm about to be busy for a few days um, funds have not cleared Gemini yet so I'm waiting on that other thousand dollars to clear I saw XPRT go down to three dollars and ten cents, and I'm like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" <laughs> you know, if it stays at this price, I'm I'm not gonna leave because I'm not gonna leave that limit buy order out there on Bitcoin Cash at two hundred and eighty when the price is now shot up to like three, I don't know, three hundred and thirty dollars on Bitcoin Cash. So while the price is still cheap on XPRT, I'm going to take that other thousand dollars and dump that onto into XPRT uh, at these prices. I mean, this is like this is like getting in back when XPRT first began. So I mean, at, at three dollars under anything under three dollars and fifty cents. I mean, anything in single digits of I got to put this down. <laughs> anything in single digits in xbrt is a buying opportunity in my opinion at these levels it's a steal it's a steal because <laughs> like with my xbrt now now i'm earning i, I want i know it's over one and a half a day that i'm earning in in xbrt so well, let's see. Alexa, 2,000 times 35%. 2,000 times 35% is 700. Alexa, 700 divided by 365. 700 divided by 365 is approximately 1.9178. So it should be earning somewhere around 1.91 with the amount that I currently hold at 35 percent so but i know just from roughly looking at my rewards daily i know that it's over one and a half so is it 1.9 i don't know i haven't tested it yet um i still claim my rewards and then i stake them daily or restake them daily so i do that to compound that interest so with XPRT, yeah, you can stake it and walk away, but your rewards of XPRT will not be working to help you. You still have to log back in and claim those rewards and then stake the restake those rewards back into your primary balance. So, yeah, it's a little bit to it, but it's not really. I mean, it, it takes me all of about five minutes every day just to go in and check on all my different stakes that I have across the board and 
claim rewards and restake and do all of this and then go back through and, and check. Um, let's see what Theta and T Fuel are doing, right? Let me Alt Plus. Um, all right, Theta. Theta, I restarted my node yesterday because I, I noticed that it was like hung up. Uh, it wasn't, it like down at the bottom where it says like finalizing block whatever a few seconds ago it wasn't saying that it was it hadn't given an update in like three days and I, I was just like uh, yeah so I closed it down checked for updates um, did a seat cleaner on the machine on the computer and checked for updates on the computer and um, did everything and then I did a restart on the on the server so uh, so yeah right now I'm I've earned 10.13 T fuel which is nowhere near what I started off doing so I started off somewhere around 40 a day so I'm not understanding the 10.13 maybe it's due to time or congestion I'm not sure I just restarted this node uh, not that long ago um, it has not been a full month yet but my balance is now at 614 so like I figured I, I had said it before I, I figured that my earnings will be about rough should be about a thousand T fuel per month from this guardian node and let's see on the elite edge node where is that Elite Edge Node, it still shows 1.4789 as uh, my T Fuel earnings from from staking all the other T Fuel that I have. Um, but however, the payouts won't be, it says, until the first week of the month. Well, it, I mean, it's like the 9th or the 7th. So. I don't know we're just gonna let it run anyway um, what it does I will uh, keep you keep you up to date right so just uh, running a few things on this new machine that I put together um, well really it's a pre-built that I beefed up so I uh, had everything I was looking for to, to build another uh, server anyway and so yeah, whatever, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel about maybe one more cup of coffee, about six dozen eggs. I mean, not six dozen, about six eggs and a uh, little toast. And I think we're about to get started on, uh, on these handrails again. So anyway, this has been, oh, I'm sorry. It's been 28 minutes. So look, y'all be cool. Go make it a day. Later.